And this is part six of my series for absolute beginners, for those of you who've picked up the sticks for the very first time and want to learn how to play a few beats and fills so that you can play along to your favorite songs and just get comfortable with the instrument. If you've not done so already, I strongly recommend you watch parts one through five, unless you're one of those difficult sorts of people who likes doing things their own way. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to apply all the stuff we did in the previous videos to playing on the ride instead of the hi-hat. Playing the ride allows us to change the sound of a groove quite easily. It's very common to play hi-hat in the verses of a song and then ride in the choruses. It gives you a slightly airier, bigger sound. Uh, it's kind of has a bit more presence in some ways and usually is a nice way to change the energy of beats or grooves that you're playing. Uh, I'm going to be playing the ride. It's over here on my right. I'm going to be playing it with French grip. That means that my thumb is going to be on top of the stick. Most of uh, the time when I'm playing the hi-hat, I'll be playing German grip with my hands on top of the sticks. Um, but I like to use French grip in particular when we're playing the ride. There are lots of other applications for French grip and I change between them all the time. Uh, but we'll get to that another time. For now, having your thumb on top of the stick allows you to keep your arm very relaxed when you're playing the ride. You don't need to play the ride cymbal very hard. And you want to play the tip of the stick, that's that, uh, somewhere in the middle of the cymbal, depending on your cymbal, but just as a starting point, halfway between the bell and the edge of the cymbal will usually give you a decent ride sound. And all we want to hear is ding, 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 ding. And this will cut through anything, so you don't need to put a lot of energy into it. And playing French grip lets you just pivot the stick over your index finger and play a nice consistent eighth note pattern. Okay, so that's how we're going to focus on that. If you play uh, German grip on the ride cymbal, it will tend to uh, force you to open up your arm like this, and it, it kind of it's hard work keeping the arm in the air. This way, the stick just does most of the work for you. So that's how I'd recommend you play it. You do what you like. Now, I'm going to go from here. We're playing a basic beat, two and three and four and, and just swiveling my hand over here helps me find the ride. And then we're going to play our beat like so. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. Focusing on trying to get a nice even sound on the ride without doing too much work. If your stick moves around a little bit, try and gently encourage it to stay in the same place and hit the same spot on the cymbal. And uh, a lot of cymbals you'll find will sound different depending on where you strike them, so you might want to play along with the surface. Where does it sound best? Obviously this thing doesn't care where I hit it, it's the same. Because it's not a cymbal. It's a digital MacGuffin. Two and three and four and two. Now, when you first do this, you might find that even though we've just got this little movement of the hand from the hi-hat over here to the right here, that you need to adjust to it. It might not feel quite as easy as just moving your arm there. And you might have to really slow down and focus on getting used to playing the pattern with your hand playing this side instead of that side. Don't worry if it's challenging, uh, you'll get the hang of it and the vast majority of people find it a little bit challenging even though nothing really seems to be happening except for this small move of the hand, okay? One and two, three and four. Now, once you're comfortable just playing a basic beat, in this case I'm playing bass on one and three and the snare on two and four of course, we're gonna add the left foot playing the hi-hat like this. One, two and three and four and one. It adds a little bit of texture to the snare it gets you working on your left foot a bit. Three and four and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and one two and three and four and one and okay and just settle into that. Check that your right hand is playing nice even strokes on the ride. Inconsistency will be heard. So you want to try and get your hand rocking nicely with the stick. One and two and three. I always find with this electric abomination that I kind of hit too heavily. If I was playing a real cymbal, I'd be probably even softer. But again, use your ears. One and two and three and four and. If you've not played the left foot before, 
which is a great way to give it some exercise and start getting a sense of how you coordinate the left foot with the rest of your limbs in a drumming context, of course. One and two and three and four and two and ta dee da da dee bush. Okay, good. Now, once you've got the hang of just playing that basic beat with the bass on the one and three, uh, have a go playing some of the other patterns. For example, we could do the We Will Rock You. One and two and three and four and two and three and four and gets your feet to kind of negotiate something slightly differently and three differently different one and two and four and one and two because the relationship between the foot the right foot and the left foot a little bit different two and three and four and one and two and if you go back to this one and two and three and four you've got that slightly marchy feeling between your two feet one and two and three but then you go back to this and two and three and four and two and three and four and one and two we will we will walk you okay and that's it so get used to playing at least the, those four different bass patterns that I showed you before. Next, we're going to add the crash and start counting in four bar phrases. So uh, again, I'm assuming that you've learned how to play the four bar phrase pretty comfortably and count out loud as well from my previous uh, couple of videos. Uh, now we're gonna add the crash and play along a little bit and see how that feels. If it feels settled, if we feel comfortable, we're then gonna add our fill, which I described as ta di takadi. And then we're rocking and rolling. Here we go. One and two and three and four and two and two and three and four. Three and two and three and four. Four and two and three and four and one. Two and three and four and two. Two and three and four and three and two. Three and four and four and two and three and four and one. And three and four and two, two and three and four and and three and four and four and two and three and four and bring in the fill. Three and four and two and two and three and four and three, two and three and four and four and two and ta di da di one, two and three and four and two, two and three and four and. And two and three and four, four and two and ta di da da di one, two and three and four and two and two and and four and three and two and three, four and four and two and ta di da da di one, and three and four and two and two and and four and three and two and three, four and four and two and ta. Ooh. Where did that go? Very hard looking at the camera and playing at the same time. Anyway, you get the message there. You practice playing the beats on the ride on their own, just counting one bar at a time. Then when you feel comfortable, start counting in four bar phrases using the crash. And again, play that a bunch of times. When that starts to feel settled, add the fill, ta di takadi. And it might not take that long to get comfortable with. Most people get the hang of this fairly quickly. And keep practicing that diligently. And uh, when you know that you can play all four of the different patterns that I showed you, and you can improvise a little bit uh, or move between those bass drum patterns a little bit, you're pretty much there. The next thing I would recommend you do is start learning how to alternate between a four bar phrase on the hi-hat and a four bar phrase on the ride. So it would look like this. I'm gonna just go with the, um, uh, the most common beat in rock music based on one, three, and the end of three. It goes like this, one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and two, and three and four and three and two, three and four and four and two and ta di da da di one, two and three and, don't forget the left foot here, three and four and three and two and three and four, four and two and ta di da da di one, two 
and three and four and two and two and three and four three and two and three and four and four and two and three to the D one and two and three and four two and two and three and four and three two and three and four and four and two and two and three to the D one okay and that's it you're playing four bars on the hi-hat four bars on the ride so that's the next stage in getting really comfortable with the basic beats and fills and uh, we're going to build up towards being able to follow the structure of a song by uh, understanding all this stuff and being able to move between those so uh, you know spend plenty of time try to be patient uh, work on all these things really slowly um, i'm not sure what tempo i'm playing there but probably around 80 bpm something like that keep it at those kind of sensible tempos learn how to control your limbs nicely make sure as i explained in the other videos that the bass and the snare is always nice and punchy and in your face but the hi-hat or the ride are played consistently and quite lightly you don't need to play them very loudly uh, i'll talk about some other ways um, we can play the hi-hat and uh, we can use the crash and the toms instead of uh, the hi-hat or the ride as well but for the time being, just get used to that consistently. I know you, you already want to play YYZ or whatever, but um, slowly, slowly, one step at a time, in, in my opinion, anyway. Go and jam what you like, but uh, that's that. Anyway, uh, there we go. I think that'll do for today. Uh, I hope you found this useful and enjoyable. I, I hope that if you're a beginner, beginner, and you've been following this series of videos, that you're finding this useful in some way and you feel like you can progress with it. If so, please let me know. Uh, that's it. We're all done. Go away and practice.